Well, this repair started out with uh, some oil on my driveway. I noticed I was dripping some kind of oil on my driveway, so in looking into it, I thought I was leaking for my power steering pump, and it wasn't. It was something else. Watch this video and I'll show you what to do to fix this stinking leak. Okay, let's pop the hood and take a look. Like I said, I was leaking power steering fluid. So I checked my power steering unit and all the hoses that are connected to it to see if there was any leaks. As I was looking at it, there was power steering fluid all around, but it wasn't coming from my power steering pump. What I found out, it was leaking from my brake master cylinder, I thought. But I noticed behind the master cylinder, there was this other unit. Come to find out, I have a hydro booster or a brake booster. Apparently this helps and allows you to have more brake power. What I noticed is that it was leaking between the master cylinder and the hydro booster where the two bolts connect underneath it was leaking. What you may want to do is have somebody go in the car, start it up, and turn left and turn right and look to see if there's any leaks coming out. Turning the steering wheel left and right will create pressure so you should be getting some kind of a leak if it is leaking there. It has two aluminum lines as shown here, one here and one here. Make sure these lines aren't leaking. Also you have a hose here. Inspect these and make sure there's no leaks in these lines. Like I said earlier, the hydro booster is connected to the master cylinder with two bolts. One is here and there's another one on the other side. And like I said, mine was leaking from the bottom. Once you take the master cylinder off, this is what you're going to see. And if you look at the red arrow, that's where it leaks from, from this wee hole. If you look inside, you'll see sort of like a piston in there. And you can vaguely see a O-ring in there, or a gasket. Apparently that's a bad gasket, so I need to replace that. So in order to remove the hydro booster, the first thing we need to do is remove the brake master cylinder. We're going to remove two 50 millimeter screws. One here, and one here. Now, don't remove any of the hoses, any of the lines, any of the connectors. You don't want to disconnect anything. You don't have to. But if you do, you may be forced to bleed all the brakes. So don't disconnect anything. Now that we got the two 15 millimeter bolts off, we're going to move the master cylinder forward Try not to bend any of the lines. Just move it forward till it clears those two bolts and just lay it on its side. Now that we got the master brake cylinder out of the way, with an 18 millimeter wrench, we're gonna remove this line. And with a 15 millimeter, we're gonna remove this line. Next, we're gonna take some channel locks or pliers and we're gonna remove this clip so we can remove this hose. Here's something I wanted to show you. Here's one of the lines removed. Each of the two lines there has an O-ring. Inspect the two O-rings and make sure that they're good. But they're so cheap, so just go ahead and get some new ones and replace them. But just make sure when you put it back together, you have an O-ring on each line. Now that we got everything removed, we can go ahead and remove the hydro booster. What we're now gonna do is remove the four nuts that attach the hydro booster to the firewall. Those nuts are underneath your dash. The hydro booster has four studs, as shown here in these arrows, that go into the firewall. Here's a picture of the studs that are similar to what we're going to be working with. If you also notice, we have this rod sticking out with this loop at the end. That loop connects to your brake pedal. This protrudes through the firewall, so remember this shape. We're going to be seeing it later. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is open our door, and we're going to go to the steering column, and we're going to raise it up out of the way. Then we're going to go ahead and move our seat back, all the way back. Okay, I don't know about you guys, but uh, I really hate working under the dash because you're on your back and, you're, and your back is really arched really bad. I knew I was going to be under here for a long time, so I had to do something. So I found this. It's one of those boxes that you can roll your hose up. For me, this is the right height, so it'll make it a little more comfortable because, like I said, I'm going to be under there for a long time. So you may want to think about doing this. Now you just sit down and lay back and then just shove your arms underneath the dash. This is where my intense yoga training comes into play. Okay, take your flashlight and let's take a look up in there. Okay, one of the first things you want to do is move the brake pedal. 
If you notice here, this is the arm to the brake pedal. What you're looking for is the brake switch, and this is it right here in the white plastic. This is what the plug looks like once you've pulled it out. Since you're going to take this off, you might as well replace this too, that way you don't have to do it again later. They're not very expensive, so go ahead and get another one so that way you don't have to do this repair again. And this is the plug that goes into the brake switch. Unplug it and set it aside. Remember that rod that I was telling you about earlier? Well, this is it. And that loop on the end is inside the switch. Okay, through the magic of video editing, if you move the brake switch out of the way, what would that brake arm look like? If you notice, you see a pin sticking up here on the arm. That's where the brake switch goes into. The brake switch plugs into that. If you look closely at the end of that pin, there's a groove at the end of that pin. I'm sorry, this is not a great shot, but you can barely tell there's a black line going around that pin. That's where a retain clip snaps into it, so you need to remember that. If you look closely there, you can see this clip. This is what the clip looks like once you have it out. If you look really close on that clip here, there's a little lip. That's what snaps into that pin, into that groove in that pin that I was talking about. That keeps your brake switch and that loop at the end of the hydro booster together. Now the other thing you need to know is if you flip this clip over, you're going to see a keyhole punched out. Okay, to take this clip out, it's a little tricky, but can be done. Now to remove this clip, you're going to need a small screwdriver. Now once you're in there, you're going to have to turn this clip around. It'll spin around. And you're going to put that screwdriver right here, and you're going to pry it open, and it's going to unsnap, and everything will come apart. Here I made a mock-up of how it comes apart. Here's the clip, how it comes apart. With your screwdriver, you're going to pry up at the same time, sliding it out of the keyhole. And then this is how you disassemble it. You can remove the rod with the loop at the end and the brake switch. Just clear that out of the way, like this. Remember where this linkage is, the one with the loop at the end. This linkage is towards the column. This is really important to know because what you don't want to do is when you're putting the hydro booster back together that you have this on the wrong side. So you're going to have to take it out and redo it. Make sure it's on this side when you're putting it back together. Okay, now comes the fun part. These are the tools you're going to need. Okay, now what we're looking for is the four studs and that rod that comes through the firewall. Here are two studs here with the 15 millimeter nuts in place. Here's the rod and there's two more studs right behind here. Let me see if I can find a better photograph like this one. So you can see the four studs where they're at. And here's the rod up here. Okay, let's go back to that first picture. If you haven't noticed already, you can see these plastic holes where the stud goes in and at the bottom is the nut. This hole, believe it or not, keeps your socket in place. So all you have to do is put the socket in the hole. Once in the hole, feel for the nut, make the connection, and go ahead and start removing it. As you're removing it, this plastic hole helps keep the socket in place. Now the trick is putting the socket in the hole. Some of them are easy, some of them are a little difficult. Again, if you have hands like Andre the Giant, you're never going to be able to get your hand in there. It may seem difficult at times, but you can get that socket in there on all four of them. Remove all four nuts. Once we have all the nuts removed, we can now remove the hydro booster. As you can see, I've already pulled out the hydro booster. It's really easy. It's really simple. Just pull it out and it comes right out. As you can see on the other side of the booster, I've got this bracket. You want to carefully move the bracket forward. That way you can pull back on the brake booster and it should come right out. It's pretty simple. Just be careful while you're doing that. Okay, now we've got it pulled. Let's get it on the bench. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to separate this hydro booster. And how we're going to do that is taking off these five E-bolts. Here's one here. Another one here. Here's number three. Number four. And number five.
I bought this E socket set at Harbor Freight. The closest thing that fit was an E14. As you can see, it's not a tight fit. Feels a little sloppy. I may need an E13, but it doesn't come with an E13. So I tried this 3 8 box wrench, and the 3 8 box wrench feels nice and tight. I'm gonna go ahead and use the 3 8 box wrench. Here I am getting ready to hold that wrench down with my thumb. I'm gonna put a lot of torque on that bolt so I don't want the wrench to slip off. I'm gonna to have to use another wrench to give me a little more leverage to break the stud loose. Since I don't have a battery powered impact gun, I'm gonna to have to put this on a vise to hold it down while I take the bolts off. I'm gonna to have to use this other wrench to give me a little more leverage. These are on pretty tight. Oh well, time to get another wrench. Once I got all the studs loose, I removed all four studs. I left one in there. The reason being, before I take it apart, I'm gonna clean the outside first before I open it up. I don't wanna get any debris from the outside in there. Only takes a couple of seconds. Here I am using some brake cleaner. Now it's time to remove the last bolt so it'll come apart. Mine came apart pretty easily. There's a spring inside that's making it push open. So you want to carefully and slowly open it. Open it slowly so you can see how the parts all come out. As you can see, I'm grabbing this plunger. There's a yoke locked onto it, so I'm moving it up to disengage it. See the slot cut out of the end? That's what the yoke catches onto. I'll show you here in a second. Okay, here's this yoke that I was talking about. If you look inside, you'll see these two pins. Those two pins have to go into this slot. Make sure that these pins are in that slot as you're assembling it back together. Otherwise your unit's not gonna work. So be cognizant of that. Okay, now it's time to take out this Ron gasket. If you can imagine a piston with a piston ring, well, this is the opposite. The piston ring is in the cylinder wall. Well, that's where this gasket's at. Look at the rubber gasket real close. It has a fin on it. You want the fin facing towards you when you put the new one in. To take it out, I use this picking tool. I just picked one end and the rest came out. Try not to scratch the cylinder wall. Here I'm cleaning any debris that's in that cylinder wall in the slot where that gasket goes into. Again, I'm using some brake cleaner. Next, inspect this piston. Make sure there's no nicks or scratches on it. You can also clean this with some brake cleaner. 
Now we're going to install our new gasket. Make sure you put it back the way it came out. What I did is I shoved the O-ring all the way past the slot. Then with my finger, I moved it into the groove. Then with the pick, I moved the gasket on the side up over the slot. And with my finger, I pushed the gasket in the slot and just went all the way around until it was all completely in. It's a lot easier if you chuck it up to your vise. Okay, it looks good. Lubricate the gasket with your finger using power steering fluid. Next, we're going to remove this figure 8 gasket. Here's the new one in the bag. This gasket here is really easy to remove. I just went ahead and used this pick tool. Remove this one and replace it with the new one. I would say at this point we're halfway done. Again, I'm using some brake cleaner to clean this area up before I put the new gasket in. Before you install this gasket, lube it with your fingers with some brake fluid. Now you can take the gasket and just fit it in the slot. Okay, once that's in, I would lubricate that aluminum cylinder or piston. Now we can go ahead and put this booster back together. Okay, you're gonna take this spring as shown and you're gonna stick it in this hole. This end is gonna go inside that piston. As you put this unit together, the piston is gonna move the spring forward and the rod on the other end comes out right here, right in the center hole of this star. The center is made out of a rubber gasket. But before we can do that, we must connect this rod into that yoke first, remember? That needs to be connected first, simultaneously with the piston and the spring in position to close up. I know it's kind of tricky, but it can be done. Make sure that yoke is connected and it doesn't disconnect as you're putting it together. As you can see, I'm wrestling with it, trying to correctly put it back together. I'm sure there's some guy somewhere that puts these together for a living and can put these together with his eyes closed. Too bad that guy's not my neighbor. Once I got it together, I started putting the screws back in. As I'm tightening the bolts, I'm looking at the opposite side where the star clip is at, making sure that rod is going through the hole. Beware, if there's any pressure on that clip, it'll shoot right out and you won't be able to find it, so be careful. Here I'm going around and evenly tightening all the bolts until they're nice and snug. Then 
Then I clamp it on the vise and I torque the bolts down. Congratulations, gentlemen. We just rebuilt a hydro booster for a 2005 Yukon Denali 6.0 engine in it with all wheel drive. Now we can install the hydro booster back into the firewall. It's a little awkward to get in there, but it'll go in. Make sure you got the rod with the loop on the end on the right side. Remember, the rod is towards the steering column. Make sure it's on the right side because you'll have to pull it out and redo it again. You've got to push that rod through a rubber boot, so to speak. The rubber boot creates a seal. Once I got it in there, I used that bracket in the front, that fork bracket to prop it up temporarily while I go in under the dash and put the nuts on and tighten them up. Okay, now it's time to get back under the dash. If your hands are small enough, you can start putting the 15 millimeter nuts back into the studs. If that's kind of hard to do, try this trick. Take some electrical tape and wrap it around the nut, then shove it in the socket. Once you shove it in, that nut is in there really tight. Now it's hard for that bolt to fall out. Now you're going to take your socket set up and stick it in there and fish that socket into the hole. Once you got it in the hole, go ahead and start screwing the nut into the stud. Do that for all four of them. Get them nice and tight. Okay, at this point, two things are going to happen here. One is you're going to put these four nuts on really quick and you're really good at this. Or two, you're going to have a hell of a time putting these four nuts on and you're going to get frustrated. But either way, these four nuts have to be screwed in there. Now that we've got all four nuts tightened up, we're gonna install the brake switch. Okay, you can see where this hole is. That's gonna go into the pin that's on the side of the brake pedal. If you look in the back, you'll notice that you only have a half a hole and one side has a wedge opening to it. That's gonna help you locate the pin. You're gonna slide up right to it and the wedge helps you find it. Here's a mock-up to show you how it comes together. Okay, pretend this chrome extension is that pin coming out of the side of your brake pedal. Now you're gonna take that rod with the loop on the end from your hydro booster, and you're gonna put it in between your brake switch as shown. Once you have it in, then you're gonna slide up into the pin, and that wedge in the back automatically centers the pin in to help you locate it and just push it in. Let me show you again how it comes together. Here is a view from the back side. And I'll show it again to you. Now that we have everything in its place, we need to put the clip on. And that clip is gonna get locked in with that little groove cut out out of the pin on the end. Remember we talked about that? Well, here's an example of how that clip goes in. Okay, but first, remember the back side of this clip had a keyhole cut out? Well, what you want to do is put the large hole in the pin first. Then you're going to apply some pressure and an upward motion to lock it in place. Either upward or downward, depending on which way the clip is facing. So you're going to put it in the big hole first. You're going to use a downward motion, either pushing up or down, depending on how the clip is, and it should snap in. Make sure this is snapped in. You don't want this clip to fall off. This is what keeps everything together. So make sure that that clip is in correctly. Okay, we got the clip in place correctly. We have all our four nuts nice and tight. We're done working under the dash. Now the last thing to do is to install the master brake cylinder into the hydro booster. And to do that, all we have to do is tighten down these two 15 millimeter nuts. Once we've got them all tightened up, Top off your power stream fluid. Connect your battery. Hop in the vehicle, press your brake all the way down, start the vehicle up 
and you should get pressure, you should feel the brake pedal come up. After you've checked and you know you have brakes, unblock your tires and go take it for a test drive. After you come back from your test drive, double check your power steering fluid level. Keep an eye on it for the next month or so. At the same time, keep an eye on the unit itself and make sure there's no leaks on any of the things you touched. Well, I finally got it done and so far it's working really good and gosh, I saved a lot of money. I could have spent around $800 for this repair and I only had to pay, I think it was $39 for the gaskets. I know it was a little long, but you know, you can fast forward it if you want. I hope this video helped you to show you what you need to do to do this repair. If I can do it, I know you can do it. Until then, don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you at my next video. Okay, well I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it was very informative. Please check out my other how-to videos. Oh, and check out my new website. There's new items being put in there every day. Don't forget to like and subscribe and of course, hit the bell. Until then, we'll see you at my next video. Bye.